hey, come on in. I was just running a part over here on the Contura CMM from Zeiss. This is the one that we were just talking about in the conference room. As you can see, this particular Contura is a 10126, and it does have the active scanning, the Vast XT on here. Now, this particular program, we're running on some Renishaw fixture systems, and you can see that we have a Zeiss Star probe up here with some ThermoFit extensions. Now, a nice probe like this, we get the part up off the table. Now, you guys do horizontal machining mostly in your shop. You have a lot of high precision, five axis, fourth axis work. And in those cases, you know that you're gaining efficiency by being able to machine multiple sides of the part at the same time. And one of the things that we find is that most people with traditional CMMs are just going to lay the part down flat on the table, and then they're going to measure one side at a time, much like they were working on an old vertical mill. What we like to do is combine with the Renishaw fixturing. We get the part up off the table. We use a nice, robust star probe from Zeiss. And that way we have access to all five sides of the part. You can even build a J-style probe that would reach underneath and measure features on the bottom to give us true six-sided access. That way we're loading parts one time. We're getting all the dimensions that are critical. We're getting one report to send to the customer. Here you can see some pretty high-speed scanning. This system does have the navigator function, which is what allows us to do some of these really high-speed scans and maintain accuracy. One of the other things to understand is that we do have what is known as the VAST probe head, which of course does stand for Variable Accuracy and Scanning Technology. So please step on in, finish watching this out. The program is just about to finish, and there it's all done. Now you can see that we have some of the Zeiss PyWeb and graphics being produced on the screen here. Here we have a nice printout of the perpendicularity of a bore. Here we're looking at the profile of the slot on this particular part. And here we can see the profile of this cone-shaped feature also on the part. And PyWeb's just about done. Now it's going to generate some reports based on those graphics. Here we have our standard single report. It's just going to tell us what the, all the values are. It's going to give us a histogram showing green or red, whether things are in or out of specification. You saw a brief glimpse of the Zeiss PyWeb SPC output, and then here is the actual table file format that we can also work with. Now, here is a nice way if we're running multiple parts that we can actually just get all of the data from parts 1 through 12 or however many we're running on one report. What I like to look at mostly, though, when I'm running a more of a production job is this SPC chart, and it's really nice when we're looking at the Zeiss PyWeb outputs relative to SPC. Here you can see that I actually run this program quite a bit. There's about 60 runs shown right here on this particular chart. And if you look, I actually do have several of these blocks. These are typically what we're going to do, use for our training class that we do hold here at this facility. And you can see over here that I ran it on one block and then I ran it on another block. So you see a little split in the data. One of the nice things about this, I know that you guys are really heavy into your use of SPC uh, your customers are demanding CP, CPK. Well, we are going to output your CP, your CPK over here. We also can right-click on the PyWeb and actually bring up a process capability chart that's going to give us a little more detailed information about how the data is breaking down, what our capability, and some of the other statistical information that we're concerned with. So this is a really nice function built into Calypso. Here's that single printout we were looking at a minute ago. Now, this is fully customizable. I've gone with a very simple presentation. This might be what I hand to the machinist on the floor. He very quickly can see what's out of spec and how far out of spec it is. Five values did not pass on this particular report. And then, though you saw some custom graphics, and we will see those custom graphics, Calypso has a lot of really good standard graphics built in. So, for example, here we're looking at the flatness of the top of the part. This is just a stock graphic that comes out with no additional input. Here we can see the perpendicularity of the front of this particular part. Some interesting things going on with the shape there. And here we see the cut that was taken on the side of the part, and we do see a little bit of a dishing. I do happen to know that this side has a little bit of a dish because of the way the shell mill moved over it. Uh, next. We can take a look at the profile of the slot on top, and this magnification seems a little bit on the high side for me, 
So let's see if we can just adjust that down a little bit, maybe 35 times magnification. Oh yeah, we can definitely see what's going on, but I think we can bring it all the way up to maybe 95. Oh, and now we have a pretty good picture of what's going on. In fact, we can see that there was a little error from the backlash of the mill when the lead screws reversed and it was trying to interpolate that shape. We'll have to see if this mill is actually capable of running these parts. And that's one of the nice things about having this sort of visual in, uh, information in front of you. It's not so much that we don't want the numbers. We do want the numbers. The numbers are right here. But we humans, were a very visual people. And when you see a picture of something, in particular, when you show the picture of what's really going on with the part to the person who is making that part, they will naturally connect those shapes to their processes. And whether they want to or not, there is a natural evolution that is going to happen so that the next time that person goes to write a program or run a part, they are going to integrate this new knowledge to actually produce better parts going forward. Without this continuous quality feedback loop, there is no actual way for most machinists to improve other than, gee, I didn't crash the machine. Of course, some of the other graphics in here, we see a nice roundness plot. True position plot, it looks like that's way off. And of course here, we're starting to get more into the CAD graphics. So rather than look at these here, we can just come take a quick look at Calypso directly. So here, we have an evaluation of the profile for the cone over here on this side of the part. And we can see, oh, looks like our graphics are a little off, not a problem. Let me fix that here. Ah, uh, yeah, look at that ridiculous tolerance. Let's fix those. 0.2 and minus 0.2. Oh, actually, this is just a cone angle. What was I thinking? You know, it's hard to actually do work and pay attention to what you're doing at the same time. So rather than clicking on profile, I was looking at angle. Let's look at the profile. That's more of what I was expecting to see. And here, again, we can see that this shape or this feature was interpolated by the mill. We can actually see right here where the lead screw of the mill that made this had some backlash and we have a little bit of form error going on there. You know, it's a thing to consider is once you start looking at these shapes, let's say we wanted to cut a very tight tolerance bore. Well, we would know right off the bat that the mill that made this is going to have this basic error in form and maybe that's going to prevent us from wanting to cut a very tight tolerance on that particular machine. Now, in the case of this profile, we can see that there was just a little bit of a flare at the bottom, and it looks like we're out of spec a little bit at the bottom there. So some of the nice stuff that we can actually see from the Calypso software. Now, a lot of times people will ask me, well, John, you know, what does it take to actually program the Calypso software? And here, obviously, this is not a complex program. Here we can see just a few dimensions and characteristics that we've put together. Now we can take a look at the features, and these are the actual features. Now a feature is just something that's physically on the part. We might think of it like a CAD entity. Really, it's just the way that we tell the machine to go and collect data. The characteristics are the results that we want to see on our printout. So very simple separation in Calypso. The reason they're on two tabs, by the way, is here under characteristics, I can create an order of characteristics that matches how I want them to be presented on the printout. And over here on the features, I can decide how I want to group them relative to the probes, probe changes, or the order I want to go across the part. Now, if I wanted to add something new to this particular program, for example, maybe I want to measure those three holes right there. So I can just come in, define a circle on a cylinder, zoom into the CAD, and it's as simple as one, two, three, and I'm just going to highlight those three characteristics. Now, one of the nice things with the Zeiss machine is I can turn down the speed knob. I'm going to press F9 on the keyboard, which is going to tell the machine to actually start running. And then I can take my joystick over here to the machine. I still have the speed turned down for safety. And when I press return, the machine is going to go ahead and measure those features. This is what I would call manual measurement. Okay. At no point am I really using the joysticks to try and take measurements in the modern world. Occasionally, I might have a simple part. Maybe I want to measure a diameter. Maybe I don't have a CAD model. We can certainly program and measure all of that stuff. 
But most of the time, we have a CAD model. And I always like to remind folks that when we're here in a machine shop, if there is no CAD model available, 100% of the time, the programmer will first draw the CAD model and then use that CAD model to actually write the program. And we can use that same CAD model to write our Calypso program. Now, I remember early on, I would have programmers say, John, I don't want to give you my CAD model. What if my CAD model has a mistake? And I would tell them, I go, all CAD models have mistakes. In fact, if your CAD model has a gross mistake, like maybe a hole is in the wrong place, when I write the CMM program, I will actually detect the errors on your CAD model, and we might actually prevent those errors from ever being machined in the part. So it's not that you should be afraid of me using your CAD model. You want me to use that in-house CAD model. And I think that's going to be really applicable in your situation. I know a lot of your customers are older military projects, but your programmers are almost certainly creating new CAD models for all of the products that you're working with. So you saw me go ahead and measure those circles real quick. Now let's just open one up. I remind you, I haven't optimized this. This is a, a typical really bad training part, what have you. But we can see right off the bat that just by clicking on the CAD model, I was able to get us about 485 points. It looks like the form error on that bore is about 26 microns. And the actual size is supposed to be 9.5 millimeters. And it's running about 9.5584. If I want, I can quickly turn that into a characteristic. I can output some roundness. I could output the true position, anything that the drawing had for me, pretty easy to do, just like that. Click OK, and boom, we go over to our characteristics, and we immediately have those characteristics available. We can see the diameter with tolerance. We can see here is the roundness that we were looking for, and if I want to add some graphic plots, I can simply turn those on, and I'm going to guess that 200 is a good magnification on there. And finally, we created a true position. Now, right off the bat, it's going to use the base alignment. But if I wanted to, I could set up a different set of datum. So simply by clicking on the CAD model, I can say it. That instead of using ABC, I want to use A. Excuse me. I want to use A. And then we're going to use datum C. And then our tertiary datum is going to be cylinder D. So kind of an odd coordinate system, but whatever the drawing says, that's the coordinate system that we can create. So it's simply a matter of creating the datums on the drawing. In my case, I like to label them to make them easy to find. And then we simply plug them in in the order they appear on the drawing is the same order that we can plug them in in the true position. And that's it. We've just created a simple diameter, roundness, and true position. If I want to test those, I can press F9 and the machine's gonna take off and remeasure that for me. There it is measuring the bore. And since I plugged the datums in, it's gonna go ahead and remeasure the datums for me as well. And you see, we took a nice thorough scan on this top surface, again, taking advantage of the high-speed scanning capabilities of the Vast XT. And while that continues to run, I'd like to say, are there any questions that you have based on what you've seen so far? I know you've been kind of quiet there and I tend to talk a lot, but it's really important really, not so much for me to show all the things that I'm excited about because I'm honest with you, I've been running these machines for 30 plus years and I get excited all the time. When a new edition of Calypso comes out, it is exciting, it's interesting. This is fun and cool software to operate and the power and clarity of the information that you get out of it is so useful and so powerful when you share it with other people. It is exciting. You're going to actually see your inspectors making measurements, generating the graphics real time on the computer. And then you know, you know that everybody is excited about what's going on when the machinist comes in and he says, no, not what's the flatness value, but hey, show me the picture. Show me what that top surface looks like. And your inspector comes over here and he picks, you know, let's say the perpendicularity of this front surface. He says, hey, man, it looks pretty good, but let's take a, a little magnified view of that. Starts cranking up the magnification. We see, uh-oh, 
We got a little bit of a form error on the bottom. What's going on? Is our cutter a little bit at an angle? What's happening? We crank that magnification up a little further, and then we really start to see what's going on with that surface. Or maybe you're interpolating a super tight tolerance bore, and you come in here and you're like, hey, what's going on with that bore? Did we hit our tolerance? Nope, it looks like we still have some roundness issues. We're going to have some problems there. So whatever it is that you're looking for, the Zeiss Calypso system on a Contura with the Fast XT active probing system is going to be able to get you what you're looking for. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. You have my card. Uh, please feel free to email me. Uh, we can do video conferencing. You can come back in for another demo at any time. In fact, if you come back in a second time, I'm probably going to have you write the program. And of course, if you want to see all of this in action on some of your parts, just let us know. Thank you very much. Oh, what's that? You want to place the PO right now? Well, Roy is right here to help you with that. Thank you again.